In the previous video, we looked at how you can remix a template. We were able to quickly create this scrape website workflow from a template. This is the fastest way to ship your workflows, but it's not going to help as much if you don't understand how a Billship workflow works. So let's talk about the anatomy of a Billship workflow. The backend is a place reserved for the domain or business logic for your websites or mobile apps. And in Billship terms, this is a workflow. A Billship workflow can usually be summarized in four components. First, a trigger. Second, any number of inputs. Third, any number of nodes, which represent the business logic of your workflow. And lastly, an output. Let's start from the top. The entry point of any workflow will always be a trigger. And as the name implies, a trigger is responsible for kickstarting the execution of your workflow. We'll have a future video that covers all things trigger, but in essence, in Billship, you can connect one or multiple triggers. For instance, if you're building an API endpoint, you'll want to use a REST API call trigger. Or if your workflow expects any files to be submitted to it, then you can use the REST API file upload trigger. The trigger is how the outside world communicates with your workflow. After that, you'll have a set of inputs defined. The business logic of your workflow usually requires a number of inputs to process or function properly. For example, here, the scrape website template has one input website URL. This input is required because the core functionality of this workflow is to scrape a website. In order to do that, we need to specify the website URL that we want to scrape. So we pass it here as an input. A single Billship workflow can take multiple inputs. You can add a new input, you can select the type. Those inputs can then be referenced in the business logic of your workflow. And speaking of business logic, your business logic is represented by a combination of multiple nodes. The scrape website is a pretty basic example because our only business logic here is to scrape a website. And for that, we're using the scrape node. This brings us to what is a node. In Billship, a workflow is composed of multiple nodes. A node is a way for you to split the business logic of your workflow into different steps. For example, say that you want to update this template to not only scrape a website, but have an LLM extract structured data from the website. These are two different and independent functionalities. So it makes sense to split them up across two different nodes. So what you could do is bring up the Billship library, the Billship library is where you can find a list of all the pre-built nodes that Billship offers. These include integrations with OpenAI, Entropic, AWS, Bing, various database providers, and so much more. But if we go back to our original scenario where we say we want to extract structured data from the scraped content we get back, what we can do is go to the OpenAI group and then we can add the JSON generator node. And we can use this node to extract structured data from any given input. We can delete the input and then we can select the output of the scrape node. And we can just select the full scrape output. And this is a very important concept in Billship. Nodes can consume the output of previous nodes. This essentially allows you to break down your business logic into smaller and more maintainable components. And last but not least is the output of your workflow. When your workflow is finished processing, you'll usually want to return a value. For instance, here we are returning the content we scrape from a given website URL. But in other cases, you may want to return an image URL, a message from ChatGPT. Whatever the case, you'll want to use a flow output. The flow output node is used to return a value. And you can configure it to return 
the value from the last node, which in this case would be this JSON generator node, or you can use a custom output. We'll dive much deeper into each of these concepts in future videos. Now that we've walked through the anatomy of a Billship workflow, in the next video, we'll show you how you can create your own Billship workflow from scratch.